So today we're going to look again uh, at that, that same Hartzell HCB3TN. It's kind of their, their general purpose, medium-sized turboprop propeller. Uh, but we're going to see how it works on the TP331 fixed shaft turboprop engine, uh, as well as with internal pitch change control. So looking at this, the, in, in our lab here, on the, we have a TP331 static mock-up. This is down in the turbines lab area. It's kind of the combined turbines and composites room. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Uh, we have one of these on a stand, and it has a HCB3TN-5E. Okay, HCB3TN we talked about is we looked at that on the King Air. That's a dash three. Was it a B? I think it's a dash three something. But just a review of it, HC Hartzell controllable, constant speed, that doesn't change. That's the same designation. B is their basic design. That's just kind of what they call it. It's a three-blade version. They do make a B4TN as a four-bladed version. Same propeller, just four blades on a four-bladed hub and four blades instead of three. It uses the same size blades and blade shank. That's the T. They, they, they note their different blade sizes based on that. The N mount is the same, eight nine sixteenths bolts, and then two dowels on a four and a quarter inch bolt center circle. The difference is this final dash. So the dash five E, and specifically the dash five, if we look at this list over here of what do the different parts of this part number mean, because this is being used on a fixed shaft turboprop, we don't want it to go to feather every time the engine shuts down. Fixed shaft turboprops, we want to have the engine, the, the blades of the propeller stay at fine pitch. And so it has, it includes start locks. The other thing is it has an internal beta feedback mechanism versus the dash three was an external beta feedback mechanism. Now, again, those aren't exclusive to one type of engine or the other. You can see here there is uh, internal, if there was a dash seven, internal beta feedback without start locks. So that could be used on a free power turbine, like the GECT7 I've mentioned earlier, that is a free power turbine, but it is, it does, but it uses an internal beta feedback. Okay. The last part, the E, is the minor changes. Again, those are like mods over the life of the propeller modifications. So this happens to be mod E, there was probably a mod there's probably one where it was just a dash five, and then they went to a dash five A and a five B and a five C and a five D and a five E and so on as they've done minor upgrades and changes to it. If we compare them, so on the left is our, is our dash three on a free power turbine with external feedback. And on the right is our fixed shaft turboprop with internal feedback. You can see those differences. So here's the external feedback mechanism Okay, that provides beta feedback, and you can actually see kind of the linkages sticking up here just behind the spinner where the, um, where the prop governor lives. And there's the linkage. When this dome, the, on this propeller, this dome physically moves forward and back. As it moves forward, it's linked to the blades here, and it will rotate the blades. And when it gets to the point where it hits this nut right here, which is where it goes into beta and reverse, it starts to pull this whole ring forward, and that provides angle input to the beta valve on the propeller governor. Okay, so that's what we looked at in the last lecture. On the TPE331 that has internal beta feedback, it is, where you can see it is, is in the tip of the dome here. You can see this one's just kind of plugged and capped off on the dash three. On the dash five, it's got this fitting, and this is the beta at the end of the beta tube that you see sticking out right here. And that's what provides our feedback mechanism. We'll look at how that goes together a little bit later in the lecture and how that operates to provide feedback to the engine. But it no longer has that external ring. It still has the external pitch change. Here's the dome that moves forward and back. Here's the little arm that connects to the prop blade down here at the cuff, and that's gonna, that's gonna pull the blades you know, to that fine pitch position. We've got counterweights, and then there's springs inside that are going to try to move the blades to the, to the feathered, high, high pitch and feathered positions. So those are the same. And here, uh, during shutdown, the free, 
power turboprop goes to feather. Here it is in feather. And the fixed shaft turboprop, during shutdown, the blades are going to stay in a fine pitch position. So you can see the difference there. And the way this works is this one, the, the free power turbine, there, there is no set of locks on there. If you look in here, there's really, that's kind of it. You got the, the dome with its little arms connecting to the blade. We do have the feedback mechanism. But if we look closely at the fixed shaft turboprop at the base of the blades, in addition to where the arms connect, which is over here, there's this little, this little what's called centrifugal lock pin. Okay? And right now, it's engaged in this hook right here. It's a little hook. And that's keeping the blades from being able to move to that feathered position. Okay? When the engine starts, the cent centrifugal force is going to try to move these pins out. They will not be able to move until we disengage that lock. And the way we disengage the lock, we'll look at it here, is you start to go into a slight reverse. So there's our pitch, um, includes our start locks that hold the blades at that fine pitch position when the engine shut down and during the start process. Okay. So just some information about the engine this is on. When you're looking at a fixed shaft turboprop, what you're going to kind of see. The TP331, again, this isn't super important, just kind of some general info. It's a 600 shaft horsepower engine, 40,000 RPM. That's the gas generator in the core. Okay, now the gas generator, this doesn't have a free power turbine. The, the propeller is driven directly off the gas generator. They can use three or four blades with a steel hub. Spring-loaded and counterweights to the feather position, high pitch and feather position. Engine oil from the governor decreases blade angle. It's flange-mounted, as we saw in the propeller part number information, and it uses that internal beta tube. And so here's kind of a cutaway of the engine. Two compressor stages, three turbine stages, and you can see coming off, it's all on one spool. They're all rotating together, and it feeds directly into the propeller gearbox at the front of the engine there. These can be arranged. This one, it happens to be above. Um, there is another configuration where the inlet's at the top and the, and the flange is at the bottom, just to be able to fit in a different type of airplane, but they're, they're the same general aircraft. So with this propeller system, some of the things we have, we have several items on the engine and propeller, and then items that are in the cockpit. So we're going to look at these individual components. So for the engine and propeller, we have a fuel control, uh, which really isn't much different than the other turboprops. It's, it's, a, it's a hydromechanical system. It uses flyweights to sense the speed of the, the core of the engine and then it's going to schedule fuel accordingly. Uh, we have an underspeed governor if it's running too slow. Okay. We have an unfeathering pump. Now, that's unique to this engine because the, the, when we looked at the free power turbine, it didn't need an unfeathering pump because we start the engine in feather. There's no need to move it to feather or out of feather. The unfeathering pump on this is if the engine does shut down and for some reason those start locks don't engage, and the springs and centrifugal force push those blades to feather, we need to be able to get them back to that fine pitch position before we attempt another start so we don't over, overheat or over temp the engine. And so we've got an unfeathering pump that can do that. We have a propeller pitch uh, control unit, which is separate from our governor, and this is what's going to do the beta range control. So instead of having a beta valve integral to the prop governor, we actually have a separate pitch control that, that works in beta mode. And then we've got a propeller governor that works like any other propeller governor we've talked about. Flyweight, speeder springs, all that good stuff. There's a feathering valve to be able to feather. Torque sensing equipment, particularly for um, negative torque. We don't want a negative torque situation that could cause an engine runaway. The prop pitch actuator. What's the pitch actuator? Where is that? What changes the pitch? What did I say on these? Where would that pitch actuator be located? Yeah. That, are you stretching or you want to? Oh, come on. You put your hand up. Now you get an answer. 
Where's the pitch actuator? What moves to move the blades? It's a piston, or in this case, it's this entire dome that moves forward and back. Okay, it's got this linkage here. There's also a linkage here that pulls them. Okay, so the dome, that's the dome itself. And then finally, our beta tube is what provides our blade angle feedback when the, when the engine and the propeller are operating in that beta range, anything below about 95% max speed. In the cockpit, we've got a power lever. We have a second lever. It's known as an RPM or speed or condition lever. Okay. We have an unfeathering switch that powers this unfeathering pump. And then we have a manual feather control that activates the feathering valve. What are we missing? What's different here than the free power turbine? Fuel is our power lever. The power lever controls your fuel. What did we have in the free power turbine? What were our, how many levers did we have? Three, what were they? Power, power, condition, and what was the third one? And the propeller lever, okay? What are we missing here? We don't have a dedicated propeller lever, okay? And the reason for that, this can be called an RPM or speed or condition lever, is because the gas generator, which is normally controlled by the power lever and the condition lever, and the propeller, which is normally controlled by the propeller lever, right, they're kind of two separate things that run off each other in a free power turbine. But now in a fixed shaft turbine, our gas generator, the compressor, the turbine, and the propeller are all linked together. So we're only controlling essentially one unit, not two separate things. And so that RPM speed or condition lever, it is both the engine core RPM and the propeller RPM because they're linked together. So we don't need that third lever to control the propeller speed independent from the engine speed. They're directly linked, okay. And so here's just a quick diagram of it. You can see our propeller lever, sorry, our power lever mainly runs the fuel control, although it is also tied to the um, propeller pitch control through the beta tube and then the beta tube. And then our engine RPM lever ties into, bolt into the, um, the prop governor down here. So here is that propeller pitch control unit. And this is on the gear reduction assembly. Okay, and remember, the, the, when I say the gear reduction assembly, this is the propeller gear reduction assembly. Although in a fixed shaft turboprop, it's often the prop gearbox and the accessory gearbox. They really don't need a separate one because everything's running at the same speed. Everything's mechanically linked, I should say. There's a, there's a gear reduction in there. The propeller is running slower, but it's a ratio compared to the engine. The engine's turning at a certain speed. They're always going to be a ratio with how fast the propeller's turning because they're geared together. So it's mounted on the gear reduction assembly, which serves as both the prop gearbox and the accessory gearbox because we don't need to have separate ones. On a free power turbine, we have an accessory gearbox because that's running based on the core engine speed, the, the gas generator speed. And then we have the prop gearbox that's dedicated to the, the power turbine and the propeller, the free power turbine and the propeller. But here, since everything's hooked together anyways, we don't need to have two gearboxes. It is connected to the propeller through the beta tube. And that beta tube is what provides the blade angle signal for this to be able to control blade angle at those beta range speeds, anything below about 95%. It's operated directly by the power lever, and it's gonna direct oil to and from the propeller on the ground in the beta range. And it's gonna, ultimately what that does is controls the blade angle in the beta range. In flight, oil is still passing through it, but it's in a position where that's all it does. Oil passes through it. It really does. It doesn't do any kind of control. 
It just becomes a passage, a passage, a port where oil can pass through it. So if we look at the different parts of it, there's the, bless you, there's the retainer. This is just the back plate. Don't worry too much about number one. Number two is what's called a camshaft. Okay, that's where our, our, our control lever, our cables hook up to it to rotate it. These typically, have, these typically have some kind of an oil pressure port for doing maintenance. Because oil pressure is controlling so many things, if we're trying to troubleshoot the engine, we may have to hook a gauge up to that port where this plug is here at times, number three, in order to see what the oil pressure is at different speeds if we're trying to figure out why the propeller is behaving a certain way. There's an unfeathering pump inlet. We gotta be able to you know, bypass, essentially bypass any of the valves in here to pump oil to the propeller in the event that it shuts down into a feathered position. And so that's connected here, it's where it ties in. The key here, the, probably one of the most important things is this follower sleeve. And the follower sleeve is number six. That's right here, it's going around number seven is the beta tube. This is going out to the right, ultimately up here somewhere, off to the right, is where it goes to the propeller. The prope your propeller's up here in the corner of the room. Okay. So this beta tube, number seven, is connecting to the propeller. And it moves with the dome on the propeller. So as the dome moves out, that tube moves out. As the, which is when it goes to fine pitch. When the dome on these propellers moves out, that pulls those blades to fine pitch or even to reverse if it goes super far. And it pulls that tube with it. And then as the blades go back to a coarse pitch, that tube comes back to the left and comes in. And so that's how it provides a signal of blade position back to this pitch control unit. It's kind of doing the same thing that the beta valve did on the free power turbine on the PT6. Okay. But again, you can have a fixed shaft one that uses that beta valve setup as well, just keep that in mind. But the follower sleeve works in conjunction, number six, with that tube in order to, in order to control that blade pitch. And we'll look at how that operates. When we get into operation and how things move, we'll kind of compare those two. Number seven, oil passage, oil to and from the prop dome, that goes through the beta tube. So they, they call the beta tube number eight, they call the passage in the middle of it number seven. It's the same thing, it's a tube that oil flows through but it moves left to right, back and forth. Okay. Nine is there's gonna be an oil passage to allow oil when, when our propeller goes towards a high pitch position when that dome needs to move back in oil flows out of it, we have to route that oil back to the gearbox or back to the oil sump. So it's a passage back. And then 10, 11, 12, 10 is the pitch control body, 11 is the cam and follower sleeve, that's what actually moves. The, the cam moves the follower sleeve to determine blade angle and whether it's in beta or alpha operation. And 12 is the cam guide, that's the little housing it fits in. So. There still is a prop governor on here too. And the propeller governor is gonna work during alpha mode operations, anything 95% or above. And it works just like any other prop governor that we've seen, even going back to reset prop governors. So here it's mounted on that gear reduction. In an under speed condition, the fly weights are gonna move in and it's going to direct oil to the propeller. The blades go to a finer pitch, RPM increases. And that speed is gonna affect now, not just affect the propeller and the prop gearbox, but it's going to affect the core of the engine as well, because again, they're directly linked together. It's, it doesn't have that free power turbine isolating the prop from the engine. In an overspeed condition, oil pressure is relieved from the prop, the springs and counterweights push it to a coarser pitch, into a coarser pitch configuration, and that will decrease the propeller RPM. It'll put more drag on the propeller. So this is used primarily in flight. On the ground, it really doesn't do much. On the ground, anytime we're on the ground, 
what do you think it's going to be in? If we're below the alpha range, if we're in the beta range, what condition will the prop governor be in the entire time it's below that? It'll be in an underspeed condition. It's in a perpetual underspeed condition until we get to that alpha range where now it, it starts to act like that constant speed propeller and it takes over from the pitch control unit. Okay. So when it's in an underspeed condition below the below 2000 RPM, it basically is just going to port oil to the pitch control unit and really doesn't do much at that point. There's also an underspeed governor on the engine, which is integral with your engine fuel control. So where we had like overspeed governors and that kind of thing on the prop, we've got a separate governor on the engine. And so now, because the propeller, when we go to a, when, we're, when we go to a, a higher pitch position that requires more power to keep the propeller spinning at the same speed, as that propeller slows down, it's also slowing down the engine itself, the turbine engine itself. And so the way the, en the engine has to manage that, right? We can't, the engine needs to keep going. This is, this is actually called a constant speed engine. It wants to run at that 40,000 RPM almost all the time. And so what it does is in the fuel control on the engine, you have an underspeed governor. It's basically another set, it's another flyway governor similar to this that senses that the engine is slowing down. And what does it do? What does it need to do? What is, if, if a turbine engine is slowing down, what do we need to do to speed it back up again? To bring it back up to that desired operation speed? What do you think it's gonna do? What's that? That's the prop governor. This is the underspeed governor, it's on the engine fuel control. So it can't do anything to the propeller. So if the engine is slowing down and it wants to maintain a certain speed, what is it going to do to the engine? It's going to start adding more fuel to the engine. And that's going to put more power in the engine and bring the propeller up to the selected speed. Okay. So the underspeed governor takes over below 2000 RPM and that's what is going to manage the engine to keep it running and not be bogged down by a propeller that's going to a higher pitch position. Because again, the propeller being directly attached to the engine, any change in prop speed is going to directly affect engine speed. The reason that's so critical on a fixed shaft turboprop is that the air in a, in a turbine engine about 80% of the air in the turbine engine is used to cool the turbine engine. Only about 20% of the air actually entering the engine is mixed with fuel and used for combustion. So if that slows down, if the compressor isn't bringing in enough air, it's still gonna be burning that same amount of, it's still gonna be using that same amount of air to, to provide combustion. It will not have enough cooling air available to keep the engine from over temping. And that's why it's critical that these engines don't underspeed for a long period of time. And the way they do that is kind of counterintuitive. They add additional fuel, right? That's going to make it hotter, but at the same time, it's going to speed the engine back up and you get that cooling air back. And so now the engine's going to be able to run at a proper temperature. And now it's at a higher power setting. It's putting more power. It's, it's transferring more energy into the air around, you know, into the, the force being produced by the propeller, the thrust. So, governor parts are pretty much the same. Oil has to come from the engine at the oil inlet. Oil comes in. The prop governor itself has its own pump inside of it, okay, to boost the oil pressure in the system. Anyone know what's a turbine engine oil system run at, roughly? Anyone ever... Have an idea? Any idea? I know you haven't had turbines yet. You probably really haven't run one much. No? So the, well, that's, that's what the propeller is running at. Okay, so the propeller, we're putting 300 to 350 PSI oil into that prop dome to get it to move. So that's why we've got a, the, the engine is only typically running at somewhere around 40 to 80 PSI. 
So that's why we need to have this little oil pump in here, number three, the pressure pump, because we need more than that. We need this 300 to 350 PSI. And that's why even on the, the free power turboprop, right, the prop governor had its own little oil pump inside of it. Because we, we don't need a lot of flow, but we need a lot of pressure. The turbine engine, we need to make sure there's oil moving everywhere, but we don't need a lot of pressure. We just got to make sure there's enough pressure to get it to the bearings and all that. So it boosts that pressure from the, the 40 to 80 PSI up to the 300 to 350 PSI needed to physically actuate and move those propeller blades, you know, change the, the pitch of the propeller blades. Number... Um, and and that's so that's the pump and then five the relief valve is this is just going to keep pumping oil if there's not a big demand for oil the pressure would just keep building 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 unless we had a way to relieve excess oil that's being pumped and so that's what this relief valve is going to do okay because it's going to relieve any any excess oil that's being pumped because it's a gear pump it's a fixed displacement pump it's always going to pump the same amount of oil for a given rpm if we don't need that much oil, if we're not really moving, if the, if the prop's in a static position, the blades aren't changing angle, we don't really need any more oil going to it. So that excess oil just goes through the, the relief valve when it hits 300 to 350 PSI, instead of boosting the 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, right? If you keep trying to pump oil into a space that's not getting any bigger, the pressure is just gonna wanna go up and up and up and up. So you gotta have a relief for that. Seven, eight, 10, 11, 14, 15. Those are all identical to every other, every other um, prop governor we've done. So we've got a control lever for an input telling it what speed we want that prop to turn. That's putting pressure on the lifting rod or controlling the amount of pressure on the speeder spring, which controls the amount of pressure on the base of those flyweights and ultimately controls where that neutral point is to set the prop RPM. Anytime it is less than 2000 RPM, those flyweights are gonna be in. They're gonna be in an underspeed condition and they're gonna drop this pilot valve down. And what that means is the 15 here. Anytime this is dropped down, it's just going to connect the pressurized oil and send it out to that prop pitch control. That's where anytime this is in an underspeed, it's not doing anything. It's just going to send oil to that pitch controller. And that pitch controller is going to be trying to, is going to be look for beta range operation, going to be controlling the angle of the blades. We also have a feathering valve in the system. We do want to be able to feather the propeller. When, when would we feather the propeller? We don't do it at shutdown. We've got those locks in place to prevent it at shutdown. Why would we want, you know, that's when most propellers are feathered is when they're shut down if they're on a free power turbine. Why do we need a feathering valve? Why do we want to be able to feather it without activating those, those locks? When would that be used? What's important about being able to feather a turboprop? When are they, when do we need to be able to feather a turboprop? Why is feathering critical? Yeah. What's that? Engine failure in flight. Reduce the drag. Okay, especially if it's a multi-engine aircraft. If you don't feather the propeller, if it shuts down in a case where it's in that fine pitch position, it's gonna windmill. And that windmilling is gonna create a ton of drag, and then your plane is gonna wanna spin, right? One engine stop, there's a lot of drag on one side. Engine's running, creating thrust on the other side, plane's gonna wanna go into a spin. So we need to have that ability to feather, even though, you know, again, the only time that would normally be done is an emergency shutdown in flight, or you as maintenance technicians, when we're testing the systems to make sure they operate so that they are available when they need them in flight. So they can be operated automatically by torque sensors or even oil pressure sensors. If the engine starts to automatically shut, if there's something that causes the engine to begin shutting down, 
uh, that can be activated. They can also be activated manually, typically. If, the, if for some reason automatic activation doesn't work and the crew realizes that they're losing an engine, they're going to need to feather that prop right away. It essentially, simplest form, it's one of the last things the oil passes through on the way to the prop. It releases any oil pressure from the dome. And what drives it to feather? The springs and the counterweights. Okay, the prop's still spinning at this point. It has centrifugal force, so those counterweights are going to try to move it to feather. Plus, there's springs in the dome that are going to try to push that dome back to the retracted position. And if it is feathered when we don't want it to be on the ground before we go to restart, if those, those locks didn't engage, then we have our unfeathering pump in order to supply pressure to be able to move it into that unfeathered position. So back to those controls, how do they work? What are they doing? We have our power lever that ultimately is going to be doing the horsepower output of the engine. Okay. It's primarily linked. Okay, power lever comes down, linkage here, goes to the fuel control, more or less fuel flow. It's also going to be providing input to the prop pitch control to control propeller blade angle during beta operation. The RPM or speed or condition lever, depending on the aircraft, they'll call it different things. Okay, they all work the same way. They just, you know, one company likes to call it an RPM, an engine, engine propeller RPM lever. Another one likes to call it a condition lever. Another one likes to call it a speed lever. It's aviation, no one can agree. You know, you have the same components on a Boeing and an Airbus, but I guarantee they're gonna have different acronyms and different names. So that is primarily that speed lever, kind of as like your prop, can, you can, it's not a true prop control lever because it does more, but it's, its main thing it's hooked up to is the propeller governor, okay? And controls that prop RPM, also the engine RPM because they're linked in alpha mode operations, anything 95% or above. And then a manual feather control isn't shown here that operates the feather valve and then the unfeathering switch which turns on that feathering pump. And the feathering pump just ports in down here and it can bypass, that's this oil pump, can bypass everything and basically send oil to the prop dome, pushing, you can see the cutaway here, oil comes out through the beta tube at the end and pushes this dome away from kind of the hub body here. And as that goes forward, these links pull the blades to that finer pitch position. And if it goes far enough, it goes to fine pitch and then ultimately to a reverse pitch position. This is a reversible propeller. You know, going to reverse as you go fine, you go zero, and then you go beyond that. And the, at that point, the face becomes the back and the back of the blade becomes the face. So what do these look like? If you see the control quadrant, unfortunately I don't have pictures of a real control quadrant like I did with the, uh, with the, the King Air. Uh, but you're gonna have what you have here. Here's a, a, essentially if you're looking at the control column, you have, this is trim over here, nose up, nose down, not really important for what we're doing. It's important for flying the plane, but not, not for engine propeller stuff. We've got a left engine and a right engine power lever that would go in these slots here. You have a left engine and a right engine condition or speed or RPM lever over here. In the center, you've got something called a friction lock. That is, once we get these set in position, these things, these whole airplanes vibrate a lot. We don't want them moving and walking around on their own. You, you've got little levers here. You can, you can increase the amount of friction on them so they don't want to vibrate and move on their own. So our power levers are going to run in these two slots here and can ultimately are going to control the horsepower, the power output of the engine. Power lever, power output. Pretty straightforward. So in the ground, which is beta range, they're going to control that blade angle directly. Okay. And through the propeller pitch control unit and the beta tube and all that. In flight, 
they're going to control fuel flow through the fuel control. They will, once you get into the flight range, essentially what they do, once you're into the flight idle anywhere above, so here's our ground idle. This is where they're kind of controlling blade angle. And then into reverse, they also control the reverse blade angle. But once we get above flight idle into this area up here, anywhere from flight idle to max power, they will stop directly controlling the propeller blade angle and they will lock the uh, they will lock the mechanism inside of the pitch control unit to that point where it just becomes an oil, it, oil just bypasses anything in there. It just passes through. And now at that point, once they're up in this flight idle to max position, then the, the propeller governor takes over control of the prop blades. And then this is just used for power setting in the flight range. The RPM or speed or condition levers, they live in this part of the quadrant. And as I mentioned earlier, they're similar to a recip prop lever. Okay, they're kind of a combined propeller and condition lever. Okay. Remember the condition lever set your gas generator idle speed in a free power turbine. These kind of do the same thing. They're controlling anything up to basically below any kind of ground to flight idle speed as well as the blade angle then at those higher speeds. So it controls the entire system RPM, propeller, engine, everything, because again, fixed shaft turboprop, they're all linked together mechanically through the gearbox. No, no separation of the two sections. So on the ground, they adjust the underspeed governor, which sets the RPM we want the engine to maintain. Okay. So no matter what blade angle we set on the ground, that engine's going to want to have a certain speed that it's turning at. And that's set by these when they're in this start taxi range here. Okay. By, by adjusting the underspeed. Remember, the underspeed governor is purely tied to the fuel control. It doesn't have anything to do with the propeller, other than the fact that when the propeller goes to a higher pitch and that resistance, that additional air resistance slows down its rotation and slows down the engine rotation, that underspeed governor is going to add more fuel to the engine to get it back up to the speed that's been selected here. And if that propeller is put to a finer pitch position and begins to go too fast, that governor, even though it's called an underspeed governor, it kind of works. It's basically the, the, the fuel governor for the engine. It's going to scale back the amount of fuel in order to slow the engine back down to whatever the selected engine RPM is here. So it's going to try to maintain the fixed RPM that you have selected using the condition lever while moving the power lever to change blade angle. Once we get in flight, once it's in the alpha range, it basically works like a typical prop lever where it directly controls. It, it's how we tell the propeller governor how fast we want the propeller to turn. And it also is going to vary blade angle with changes in power settings or different flight operations. At takeoff, you tend to put it at a finer you push it all the way forward to the takeoff position, which is a finer pitch. The propeller is going to run faster, but you run a lot of power through it. At cruise, you don't need it turning as fast. You can slow it down to the landing cruise position. And, but you're not, because it's not working. You don't need to work it as hard by going to a, a higher bite, but you don't need to send as much power through it to keep the plane flying level versus when you're trying to take off and climb where it really needs to be providing all that extra power. The manual feather control or feather handle connects directly to the feathering valve, typically through like a cable or a mechanical linkage. And it's separate. It's not, it, it can be separate in some cases, okay, separate control, or it can be integrated like here into the condition lever. In some cases, if you pull it back into this emergency shutoff, 
you know, during an emergency shutoff, we want the propeller to stay feathered. And so it would be integral if you go to this emergency shutoff position. It's the emergency and shutoff position. It shuts off fuel to the engine. But if it's in, if you go directly to this without first locking the prop into a fine pitch, it's going to open that valve and make the blades go to that coarse pitch position. Okay. Moving it releases oil from the propeller through the feathering valve and then it goes there. And I've talked about the unfeathering switch, purely an electric switch, that turns on the unfeathering electric pump and sends oil back to the propeller, moving the dome forward and driving those blades to that fine pitch position, essentially a zero, a zero degree blade angle. Okay. Next time we'll pick up with talking about the operation. We'll look at some different diagrams of how this stuff moves as we go through uh, operation in different phases in beta and alpha modes, and then how uh, that those are controlled, you know, looking at how the levers are controlling it, what's actually moving when you move one of the levers, and then as the blades move, how they react.